All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're going off topic, but not really, because my YouTube channel started about this sport, um, and that's rugby. You guys know that? I know that. And you know what? The All Blacks just got beaten. The New Zealand All Blacks, the mighty All Blacks. You might have heard about them, you might, have, you might not have, you probably should. Um, they are the, basically the national team of, of New Zealand, you know. Uh, rugby is the national sport and the All Blacks are the national team of that sport and um, every single you know, little, little boy and girl in New Zealand grows up wanting to be an All Black. So, with that said, I did the exact same. I'm in Australia now, I'm focusing on another sport, but that doesn't mean that I don't still like to you know, follow the All Blacks at least. And the reality is, is that they got beaten on the weekend by South Africa. So, the All Blacks play in a, a four-team competition each year. It's a Southern Hemisphere type competition. You've got South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and Argentina and they play in what's called the Rugby Championship. South Africa bet the All Blacks on the weekend and we're going to watch the highlights. So let's do that. Let's see what happened. Oh no! Kieran Reid, the captain. Let's hear what he had to say after the test. Let's look at highlights first. Alright. A very good evening to you from Wellington in New Zealand. Wellington, New Zealand. Perfect evening. True, they fucking beat them at home. From around the city, just a light oh, breeze no. at this stage. And the Westpac Stadium, affectionately known as the Capeton, prepares... The Capeton, Wellington, New Zealand. See, that's a massive stadium for New Zealand, and I think it holds like... Shit, how much does it hold? Like four, four, 40,000? Maybe 45,000? So... You know, that kind of stadium in America would be probably the same size in width, but it would just go up like two more levels, I'd say. For the seventh time, New Zealand undefeated against South Africa in the previous six encounters here. The only wins that the Springboks have got at this stadium were at Rugby World Cup in 2011, when they defeated Fiji the at the stadium before losing... You want to take those guys on, man? To Australia. And that's Do you? <laughs> Alright, who we got? Owen Frank, Sam Whitelock, uh, Scott Barrett, Liam Squire, Sam Kane, Kieran Reid, Aaron Smith, Bowden Barrett, Rico Uani, Ryan Crotty, Antoine Leonard Brown, Ben Smith, Geordie Barrett, and I'm not even going to try and name the South African team because I don't know them now. I don't, it's been too long. But I know New Zealand. Against France Malherber. Malcolm Marks returns to the middle of the front row. With Cody Taylor at hooker for the All Blacks. Owen Frank I honestly think Cody Taylor at hooker for uh, New Zealand could be a running back. No shit. He's got like a 4'6", 40. And comes head to head with Stephen Kitzel. Sam Whitelock and Evan Well, maybe 4'5". Giants of the game in every respect. And then Scott Barrett in the starting lineup. No Brody retaliation. Scotty Barrett. But look, there's three brothers in the same... T three brothers in the All Blacks. Can you believe that? These three boys grew up together, you know, all wishing they could play for the All Blacks, and all three have actually made the team. You've got Scott Barrett at lock. You've got Bowden Barrett, the best number 10 in the game, probably the All Blacks' best player at the moment, uh, in first five. And you've got the other brother, Geordie Barrett, at 15, which is fullback, which is the position that I like to play. At the back of the pack, slicing through, seeing gaps, you know, uh, kicking the ball, uh, returning punts which is one of my favourite things to do. We, we don't call it a punt return, we call it a counter-attack. The team will punt the ball down the field, you'll grab it as the fullback. Um, you've got your two wingers, or your two wide receivers, and you three will basically run up the field and try and create something. It's a great feeling, man. It really is. Anyway, let's, let's skip this. Here we go. Let's have a look. Let's go. Reed at the top, off to, off to Smith. Oh, the little pop pass from Barrett. Oh no, what are you doing? Oh, look at that! See, these are passes, but even like in this first phase of play that I've seen, there's like three passes that just got given that you'd think, fuck, how did that stick? How did they actually catch that? You know, and that's the thing about the All Blacks. 
there's always someone, someone in, in support. You know, in the game of rugby, you can only pass the ball backwards, right? Um, and when you touch, and when you, you fall over, when you tackled, the play doesn't stop. So you've always got to have people around you, your team behind you, basically in a bit of a wedge formation. So if you go to ground, the tackle's made, okay, the defense is here, your offense is here. You're in a bit of a wedge because you can only pass the ball backwards. So that person at the back of the ruck either has to pass the ball right or left, but it has to go backwards, in which case your players waiting for that pass have to be behind you in a bit of a formation like this. So then you start passing it out, passing it out, passing it out, or you know, you'll start passing it out, then you'll have another guy coming in on this angle, coming back towards the play, and um, you know, you'll, you'll open gaps, you'll spy holes, things happen, but you need those passes to stick. You know what I mean? The little passes, the little pop balls, you know, the little behind the, behind the back passes, like, they open up the game, but if you drop the ball, it's not worth it. But the All Blacks, man, they just seem to just catch it, somehow. What a beautiful pop pass. Beautiful pop pass. Do you want for the scoring for New Zealand? Look, that's a little one. That pass could have been dropped. And this one. That was two brothers. That was number 10 to number 15. Oh, see? See that? That was number two. He's a hooker. That's like an offensive lineman in the game of in the game of football doing like an awesome no look pass. And I bet you he's going to run past this guy and keep up with him. And um, you know you've got pace, you've got skill all over the park, man. All over the park. Doesn't matter what position. Yeah, Smith. The two Smiths. Let's watch that again. Yeah. See, look. Oh yeah. Okay, this is the halfback, all right? Number nine, here, Smith. Passes it backwards, slightly. It's on such a nice line that this number two, uh, Cody Taylor, is gonna run onto it, he's gonna grab the ball at pace, and in the same motion, just do this nice little flip pass. He knows someone's outside of him, right? He knows that Ben Smith, Ben Smith's right here. He's probably about five meters behind him right now, but he knows, he's got the pace. He just holds it up a little. Oh my God! Look at that pass. That's beautiful. Now, let's let's see what uh, let's see what Aaron Smith does. He's just passed the ball, right? He's passed the ball. He knows something's about to happen. He's starting to run through, right? This number nine. He's starting to run through. He knows. He knows now. He's like, sweet. That pass has been made. Ben Smith has got it. He's about to run down the sideline. Shit! I've got to get there in support for that backwards pass, right? So that's what he does. He starts sprinting. Look at him. Number nine, number nine, he's through. He knows what's about to happen. He knows he's that man that needs to be in place to receive that pass, that lateral, lateral pass, so that he can score. And he's gonna position himself perfectly to receive that pass and score. See, he actually slowed down. He slowed down a little bit. Watch this, he's in front of him at the moment. He's slowed down right now. He's gonna slow down a couple of paces just to let Ben Smith get in front of him so he can receive that ball backwards. See? Boom, what a pass. What a fucking pass. That is just magnificent. That's positional play. See, Aaron Smith, he's coming through. He holds it back a little bit. Gets the perfect pass. To perfection. And Mark's beautiful hands is LaRue and Jack This guy's quick. He is quick, man. It's a lot of a lot of fast South Africans, believe it or not. They're quick. See, look at this. It's draw and pass, draw and pass, draw and pass, draw and pass. One, okay. He's drawing this man. Pass. This one drawing this man. Pass. And the guy on the wing or your wide receiver is open. Oh, that's what you want. Ah, oh, good, fucking good shit. Oh, look at this, look at this. This is going to be great. This is going to be an awesome counter attack. Okay. Ah, oh, look at that chase down by, by uh, <laughs> number ten, man. Bowden Barrett, best player in the world, right? He just made that try saving tackle. Watch this. 
Watch this. He's right here. He's right here. He's at a standing start. Okay, he's at a standing start. He's got to turn around and go. This winger is already on the burst. Okay, look at him. Look at him. He's probably, he's got the ball now. This is one of the fastest players in the field. But Bowden Barrett is even faster. Watch this. Yes! Just as he kicked the ball. So he fucked up the kick. And what's going to happen now, in the game of rugby, if the ball goes out, it's the opposition's ball at the point that it went out. But if the team that gets the ball doesn't want to wait and they see an opportunity, they can actually take what's called a quick throw, which, is, which means it's a line out, it's a normal line out, although the forwards aren't placed in their line. They just they can just be anywhere. So basically what's happened here, the fullback, Geordie Barrett, the brother of, of Bowden Barrett, who just made that tackle, has grabbed the ball. He's seen, all right, South Africa's not down here yet. We've got some space. What do I want to do? Should I pass it? Should we try a counter attack? And it looks as if that's exactly what's going to happen. So let's see. He's going to fire off a massive pass into the center of the field. And um, the All Blacks are going to try and create something on the counter attack. Let's see what happens. Bang! Look at that. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you're fucking kidding me, bruh! Big mistake from the All Blacks and LaRue is in. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and that is the exact reason why you wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> shit. Don't listen to me, guys. Don't fucking listen to me, man. That's a shocker. What a shocker. Guys, guys, guys. The All Blacks don't do that. <sighs> See, that's a normal line out. That is a normal line out, okay? See, the two teams basically. Well, I, I don't know exactly why South Africa has the ball. It's probably because of the fact that they got a penalty, which means that they can then kick the ball out and retain the ball. If it's in general play and they kick the ball out, it goes to the opposition. But if they get a penalty, they can opt to kick for goal, or they can opt to have a scrum, or they can opt to kick for the sideline and get their own line out, which is probably what they've done. So here they're five metres out. That little chequered white line is um, the five metre line. And he's about to throw it in and South Africa may convert a try. Let's see. See, now this is a maul. This is a maul, all right? The ball is off the ground, which means that both teams can continue to push. Once it hits the ground, it stays there and the ball gets recycled. Now, Marshawn Lynch, in the game of football, did this exact thing. He got the ball as a running back, he ran into the pack, his players got behind him and pushed him, pushed him, pushed him over the line which is exactly what could happen here, effectively. But I feel like the ball is going to come out the back and it's going to be spun out wide and the backs are going to try and score. Let's see. Come on, All Blacks. Push him. Push him back. Push him back. Don't let him in. Come on, boys. See the ball's there at the back. Oh, for fuck's sake. See? Marshall and Lynch. Boom. Right there. Right? <laughs> Good stuff, boys. Good stuff. See, and the thing is, is that um, the All Blacks, I mean, obviously someone could just, in the middle of that, someone could just pull the players down and they'd all collapse to the ground and then it couldn't be a try. But the thing is, if the All Blacks had have done that, it's a penalty. So, you know, the refs know, okay, the, 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 the offensive team want to keep the ball up, the defensive team want to bring the ball down. And if it's so obvious that the defensive team have just pulled him down without actually trying to push, then it's a penalty. And because of the fact that it's so close to the try line, it's only five metres out, that's quite possibly a penalty try, which is the worst thing you can give in the game of football, in the game of rugby. The worst. A penalty try is terrible, you know? Because if you didn't do that, that action that causes the penalty, they may not have scored. But sometimes you just like, it's a, it's a brain snap, you just do it. Anyways, it looks as if 
The All Blacks know what they're doing, they had to keep it up, but they didn't have the strength to push him back, and South Africa scored. Third try to one executed. It's a brilliant read from the Springbok hooker. No wonder they're happy. Defence just hanging on here for South Africa. Sam Two meters out. Spin it, and again. Oh, what a pass! What a pass! Good hands, boys. From the left wing over at the West Pack Stadium finds its voice again. A third try for him against the Spring. Nice pass, man. See, they saw that they had three on two. Draw and pass, draw and pass, and he's in. Just like on, just like the uh, South Africans did. But the passes had to be absolutely pinpoint and perfect and done so quickly, or else the opposition would have tapped the ball down. So watch this. He grabbed it. Literally, in half a second, he has to let it go, which he does. And this one. He's just grabbed that. He hasn't even looked where he needs to pass it, and he's going to fling it out. Like, this pass is crucial. If it is stuffed up, there's no try. If it's good, there's a try. And lo and behold, it's good. And it's right at the end of the half, too. Rugby has 40-minute halves, 37 minutes 52, that's right at the end of the half, which means that the South African defence would be tired. And actually, looking at this, the 20th phase which means that the All Blacks have retained the ball for 20 tackles, which means that South Africa have probably been defending for like five minutes straight, or probably three or four minutes straight, which is, it is so tiring. It is unbelievably tiring. The cardiovascular ability of these players is incredible. And same in football, but rugby, I mean, it doesn't stop. The play doesn't stop. So, <laughs> you know. I'm not surprised that the All Blacks scored then, because South Africa would have been completely out on their Great feet. Great score from the left winger and the West Pack Stadium finds its voice again. A third try for him against the Springboks. He got one in North Harbour last year, another in the return fixture in Cape Town. 17 tries. Yeah, this guy, Rico Iwani, he's, um, he's a star. I think he scored like 17 tries in like 17 games or something. He's... He's definitely the, one of the new breed in the All Blacks wingers. Great player, great, fucking awesome player. He's probably got like a, I don't know, 4, 4, 3, 4, 3, 5, 40 maybe? Oh no! Barrett's fast going behind the man, but Nigel Owens. All right, here's a penalty. He's taken it quickly. See, look, that's the other option. Where the ref is, that's where the penalty was called. The opposition, the South Africa did something wrong. I don't even know what they did. Basically, this is the halfback, Aaron Smith. The one that you always see at the back of the ruck, retaining that ball and then passing it out. So he has decided to take a quick penalty. So you've either got the option of, you know, it, it, it's in your hands. You can either take a scrum at that point. The two teams come in like this and then the ball's recycled. You can either take a kick out, like I said, get a line out. Um, you can take a kick for goal, but obviously this is probably about 60 meters out, so it's too far. Or, if you see the opposition not having been set, and they're sort of everywhere, and you see, it, you see an opportunity, so obviously sometimes this is the wrong decision to make, but obviously, you know, we'll see what happens here. He's, he's taken a quick tap, which means that he can just go. The, the ref calls the penalty, sweet. He makes the mark, he's like, yep, yeah, okay, you can do what you want from this point. Aaron Smith has seen an opportunity in front of him, I don't even know what he's seen but he thinks that he can make something of it and we are about to see what he does. Let's see. Breaks the tackle, spins it, draw and pass. And another one. Oh fuck, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it man, I fucking did. Every time I call the All Blacks, every time I say the All Blacks is about to do something good, they go and make a stupid pass and get an interception. This is like a pick, this is the equivalent of a pick six. No shit. Absolutely the equivalent of a pick six. Watch this. Watch this. Pick six straight to the house. Straight to the house. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a nice interception, man. He's got pace too. Pick six, or pick five. Good stuff, mate. 
He deserves it. Last week in Brisbane, well, a little frenetic from the All Blacks, but brilliant new red from Colby. See, and the All Blacks come back here. We've got 30 minutes to go. Um, so let's see, you know, what, what we're made of. Let's see what we can do. Bring it back, boys. Terranara. See, and that's the replacement halfback. Uh, number 21, this must be a sub. So number 9 has gone off. He's been replaced by his substitution. So this guy will play the last 30 minutes of the game. Which keep, keeps you fresh um, and, you know, fresh legs on the field when the opposition is tired is a game breaker. It truly is. Anyway, we've got one pass here. And another one, no. How did he pick that up? That was a terrible pass. Look at this. Somehow managed to scramble around the chicken wing there. Good pick up. Oh. And so difficult to stop. I only got that close. See, we have to ground the ball, right? In the game of football, he could have been going for the line and he could have literally just touched that pylon. Is that right? And that would have been a touchdown. But we need to stay inside and actually not touch the pylon. I think if we touch the pylon, it's actually counted as out, believe it or not. So, um, yeah. Boom. Slams it down. Try. He's got two tries now. Pass. No, you can't score. Oh, fuck. It's a nice step. It's a very nice step. But we had enough defenders there to cover that. That shouldn't have been a try. No way. The second try. Fuck in man. What a way to hit back against the wall. Let's have a look at that step. The second try in the step. See, he, that's why it works. He literally has caught the ball in the air. The first step he makes after catching that ball is a bang off the left. A big bang off the left. And he gets inside this number 10, Bowden Barrett, who's coming across, this guy right here, gets inside him, gets tackled over the line, but he still scores it. Let's have a look at that bang off the left again. Bang! Well done. Well done. Bang! He's stoked. <laughs> number one side. Sheer brilliance. Some beautiful offloads in the builder and the finish sublime. To the tail they go where Sam Whitelock secures possession for the All Blacks and shovel back for Cody Taylor. See, so here we go. Another maul. The in there as well and a try is scored. It's See, we did the exact same thing that the South Africans did in the last thing. Last one. From the other side of the field. Well done, boys. Well done. Five tries apiece in the thriller. Draw and pass. Oh! 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 oh. Go, Perinara! Get there! Oh, no! Francois Lowe is trying to get hands over the board. Big clean out on him. And oh, he dropped it. Let's see where Billy LaRue comes in now. See, this is a penalty. He's offside and he does make that. Offside penalty. He's going to take the kick, which is worth three points. No, he's not. They're going to go for the try. And still rumbling on. They've scored one through Cody Taylor of the back. And they score. And they got it. And that's the final score. 34-36. Which means they must have missed the kick. And it's a really close kick, so... Well, in terms of ball tries, they don't get better than this. 15, 18 metres out. So, Bruv, he misses this kick to equal it? Are you kidding me, man? <sighs> oh my god, two out of five. He gets two out of six for the day. That is... That's not good, man. Let's list a couple this evening. The 
pressure kicked him just about 40 meters in from right hand touch. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. Off the post again! Off the post! And almost two and a half <laughs> since the sirens. Come on, boys, get a try! Come on! Oh, that was a fucking try! You're joking me, man! And this is an overtime, too, look. 80 minutes gone, 2 minutes 49 in overtime. And the fact that the. And we're in the 17th phase, which means we've recycled it for 17 phases. South Africans are just holding on, just holding on on the defense waiting for us to make a mistake so that the game can be called over and it looks as if we just made a mistake fuck but i'll run through this with you man watch this watch this this pass well this guy drops it right but if he was to if he was to hold it oh no he tries to step inside he should have just given the pass so he tries to step inside this guy and then give the pass, and what happens? The guy knocks it out of his hand. See, look, if he had have passed that ball out to this number 14, he's got a clear run for the line, and that would have been a, that would have been a game-winning try. But we made a mistake. Great defense by South Africa. Great defense. Absolutely epic, mate. The that is epic. The first time I've ever won at Westpac Stadium. But I've got to say, man, New Zealand, you did it to yourself, bruh. You know, a couple of interceptions there that led to tries. Well done, South Africa. See, that's the thing. You need, you need certain things in the game, certain moments in the game to go your way. And I guess South Africa did. Well done, guys. Well done. Fuck man. Alright. Well I want to hear our captain talk about the game. And that'll be the last clip we watch. Here he is. Kieran Reed. What a legend. Big man. He's like 6'5". He's fucking huge. Obviously, it's a quiet locker room. 36 points. Um, you know, it's hard to, to win when you do that, so... He said, if you didn't hear that, he said, we, we conceded 36 points and it's hard to win when you do that. And that's true. Like, the All Blacks would never really, usually, concede that many points. But, I mean, you saw a couple of interceptions. That's why. Yeah, they defended hard. And there's one for us tonight. I think early we let them get a lot of momentum through their ball carries. And, um, so that... Allow them to get that go forward, and they just you know, played off that really well. So that's something we tried to, to stop. And um, yeah, you know, I guess on attack, it was about building phases and <clears throat> not letting them off the hook when we had, had chances. So, okay, so yeah, one of those ones it was a great test match, bloody tough. And tonight we just uh, came out on the wrong side. The boys are, are gutted, and rightly so. Um, you know, the best thing is that we can't dwell on this for too long. Still got a great opportunity going overseas to finish the rugby championship. You know, as strongly as we can, so she's all on the line. Um, so there's lessons in the game. We'll certainly take out of it. I hope give credit to the Springbok so They came out with a great game plan and executed their part of it. In the probably last few games, we've been scoring those tries out wide and, you know, they bundled us into touch. So, um, you know, their mindset was outstanding. They, you know, certainly took it to us. Cool, man. All right, guys, so that is my analysis and my reaction to... The mighty All Blacks losing to South Africa, which doesn't happen every day, but it does happen. So guys, if you did enjoy or you want to see more, you know, rugby style videos, this was my full analysis of this whole thing. I knew going into this reaction, I wanted to stop the play when I saw something that I wanted to explain. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. If you have enjoyed this, if you have liked it, please press like. If you want to subscribe and you haven't, please do. We're mixing the sport of rugby and American football right now. So stay tuned. Peace out.